the previous video, we talk about the basic concept of discrete random variable and continuous random variable, I also gave you a definition of uh, random variable. So in this video, I am going to give you a simple example to explain discrete random variable and probability distribution. So the previous video and the next couple videos, they are all about discrete random variable. After we finish the discrete random variable, we will start another set of video for continuous random variable. So in this video, let the experiment be something really simple. So let's say we roll two fair dice and then I would let the x be the discrete random variable, x is equal to the sum of the two phase values. So the smallest sum we can get is 1 plus 1 equals to 2, and then we can get a 3, 4, 5, all the way to 12, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So x is a discrete random variable. I use the word discrete because I can use my finger to count that this experiment has 11 distinct outcomes, all right? So 11 distinct outcomes. Distinct means different. And then since this is called a random variable, so that means every single distinct outcome has its own probability. So that's what we are trying to do right now. So let's organize everything to a table. So I'm gonna draw a table right now. So let's draw a horizontal line and then I'm going to call the first column an x and then x can be equals to 2 right so when x is equals to 2 how many first of all how many distinct outcomes are in the sample space so we roll two fair dice the first die has six faces the second die has six six faces so the total is 36 outcomes so in order to get a 2, you have to get a 1 plus 1, right? This is not a 11. This is the first die is a 1, the second die is a 1, 1 plus 1 is equals to 2, all right? And then when x is equals to 3, you can have 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1, right? When x is equals to 4, 1 plus 3, 3 plus 1, and then also 2 plus 2. When x is equals to 5, you have 1 plus 4, 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 2 plus 3. When x is equals to 6, you have 1 plus 5, 5 plus 1, 4 plus 2, 2 plus 4, and 3 plus 3. When x is equals to 7, you have a 1 plus 6, 6 plus 1, so 2 plus 5, 5 plus 2, 3 plus 4, and then 4 plus 3. When x is equals to 8, can, how, how do we get an 8? Can we do a 1 plus 7? Is this correct? The answer is no, because we are using a six-sided die. Each There are six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is no seven. So it is impossible to have a one plus seven. So that is a mistake. So let me erase that. And how do we get an eight then? Then we have to use a two plus six, six plus two, three plus five, five plus three, four plus four. And then the sum is equals to nine. Can we do a one plus eight? There is no 8. The, the maximum is 6. So we can have uh, 3 plus 6, 6 plus 3, 4 plus 5, 5 plus 4, and then what else? That's it. And then sum equals to 10. Can we do a 1 plus 9? No, there is no 9, right? So we can have uh, 4 plus 6, 6 plus 4, and 5 plus 5 sum equals to 11, 5 plus 6, 6 plus 5, sum equals to 12, the last one is 6 plus 6, so count carefully, the total is 36 outcomes. All right, so I use the second column to organize, I'm trying, this, the second column is a sample space, right? So I organize the set, I organize the outcomes in the sample space to its correct category. And then uh, the third column, what I will do is I will use a probability. What kind of probability is this? So this is a frequency divided by total frequency. So the first one out of 36 outcomes, there is one outcome satisfy the first x equals to 2. So that will be 1 out of 36. So this is 1 out of 36 and then 2 out of 36, 3 out of 36, 4. You don't need to simplify the fraction, so no reduce the fraction, no decimal. 
5 over 36, 6 over 36, and then this is a 5, and then 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1. So what is the sum? The sum is equals to 6, 36, divided by 36, which is equals to 1, just like the sum of all the relative frequency. So that's so if you reduce the fraction, you might have to work with the common denominator. So that's why I said, do not reduce the fraction, do not uh, use decimal. This, this section is not about reducing fraction or uh, convert a fraction to a decimal. It's about probability. All right. So what important characteristic do you see right here? So I see uh, two very important characteristics. The sum is, the first one is, the sum of all the probability is equal to one no exception the sum must be equal to one just like the sum of all the relative frequency in a frequency distribution table number two is each probability is between zero and one if you use a decimal if you use percentage then that will be between zero percent and a hundred percent so if you take any of this so let's say five divided by 36 this is a decimal right between zero and one. So they are all probability. Probability must be between zero and one, no negative, no greater than 100%, no greater than one, all right? So I see two important characteristics and they are the features of a probability distrib distribution. So what is this table called? This entire table is called probability distribution. Probability distribution, I will just write DIST, probability distribution of what? Of the random variable X. The random variable X stands for the sum of the two phase value. So you have a sample space, probability distribution is, I have a big sample space, right? 36 outcomes. And then I use this table, imagine this, we talk about this when, at the first time we talk about distribution in this in this video. So what is distribution looks like? So distribution looks like this. You have a big sample space. There are 36 outcomes. So imagine this. Use your hand, both hands. Grab all 36 outcomes. All right. So you have a lot of stuff on your hand right now. And then you toss those 36 outcomes to this table and see how the outcomes force uh, spread out. No, not force. Spread out. So this is how they spread out. So one of the outcome went to the first row two of the outcomes went to the second row, three of the, th the 36 outcomes went to the third row, so on and so forth. And then X has 11 different outcomes. Each distinct outcome has its own probability. So that's why X is called a random variable. So let me give you a, a formal definition of probability distribution. So for probability distribution, here is how we do it. So probability, a probability distribution is an assignment of probabilities to each distinct value each distinct value of a of a discrete random variable And then or to each interval of values, we will talk about that in the future videos. So or to each interval of values of a continuous random variable. We will talk about this in the future videos. And then there are two important features. So two features. The first one is the sum of all the probability is equals to one. And then the next one is uh, each probability is assigned to a value or, or let, let, let's add, add one more, three distinct futures. And then each probability is between zero and one. And then each probability is assigned to a distinct outcome. So we have X equals to, let's say uh, X1, X2, X3, and then each distinct outcome has a probability x2 has its probability and then x3 has its probability just like this table so every distinct value has its own probability so that are the three features i to me it looks like this is uh, uh one one feature so two three 
whatever you like. So as long as they are all mapped, then that is a probability distribution. And the probability distribution of the random variable that we just studied is this table. So the entire table represents a probability distribution. So that is all in this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Appreciate your help. I see you all in the next part. Signing off for now.